This is a brief presentation on how to work with the Atlas Task Pane. We have here a sample worksheet that's um, opened up and in order to get the Atlas Task Pane to appear we want to switch over to designer mode and then choose an Atlas function. In this case I'm going to choose the Atlas free format function and the Atlas Task Pane shows up over on the right hand side. This is the Atlas Task Pane. It consists of three primary tabs, the data source tab, the filter tab, and the output tab that I'm going to explain in the next few minutes. It also contains a context information tab, which is relative to creating drill out and drill down functionality within Atlas, which I'm not going to cover as it will be covered in a future presentation. So step one, when using Atlas, within the Atlas task pane to create a query, you always want to choose a table from within your data source. You can have multiple data sources. If you move up to the tables command within the Atlas task pane and look at the bottom of this little pop-up window, you can see that I'm currently focused on the AX2012 trading reporting, re training reporting data source. There's another data source out on my machine called Sample. There's one called New. You can create a data source from scratch for whatever whatever business purpose um, you choose. So if I look inside my data source, I can do that by focusing on the or clicking on the designer button, tables designer. That pulls up the um, list of tables that you see in my window on the right. Those are the same tables. What I can do is add an additional table to this list by simply typing it in here if I know the name or if I don't know the name I can go down to the add tables command in the lower left type a partial search name in the upper left hit enter and Atlas will search through all of the tables in AX when I find the table that meet this criteria when I find the table that I'm interested in I tick it, click apply, and it gets added to my data source list. I can then click the red X. Atlas asks if I want to save this modification, and if I click yes, that pop-up window closes, the table gets added to my data source list, and on I go. Okay, So you have to have a table chosen from your data source list in order to proceed. Okay, So what I'm going to be doing is creating a query based on the customer transactions table so I'm going to use a search function I can type a um, partial search name up here and if I look down through the list of everything that con contains the letters CUS I can find that there is a customer transactions table which I'm going to tick okay that's step one that will be the primary table that I'm going to use to build this query Okay. I then need to move to step two. Step two in creating a query is to choose the fields that you want to use as the basis of filters within that query. You are presented with a list of default fields which you don't have to accept. You can choose from a list of all available fields in the primary table that you just chose. For example, customer transactions was the table I chose. So I can scroll down and see all of the fields in that table are available to be used as filters. I'm going to keep it simple and uh, I'm happy with customer account as my filter field. If I click OK, there's customer account. Next thing I need to do is set the criteria for the filter field that I've chosen. There are three ways to do that. I can type in literally the name of the customer account if I know it. When I hit enter and that amount gets copied to the expression box at the bottom of the Atlas task pane, I've ex my record has been accepted. Don't forget to hit forget to hit enter if you're doing this. But I don't want to use customer 1101. I want to be able to to use the Atlas pick functionality which lets me select a range which contains the customer accounts that I'm interested in using as filters so when I highlight them
click OK, notice that Atlas pastes the cell location D4 into the criteria. That's the second way that I can create criteria for a filter. And the third way is to right click that same field and choose what we call a named range. If I choose the default name range called account num, it has to have an equal in front of it, then what I need to do is make sure that I have a corresponding named range in my standard Excel name box, and I do. It came to me in this document. If you don't have it embedded in your document, you'll need to key it in there. And notice it is pointing to cell D4. So the word account num is my name. I've put equal in front of that name. Therefore, my customer account filter is going to look to cell D4 for the values that it's going to filter by. This, the third step involved in setting up a query within the Atlas task pane is, defi is to define your outputs. So in this case, the output, which is a balance, has been defaulted to the field called amount. If I don't like that field, I can deselect it and reselect some other amount. When I then click insert, that will insert my choice into the document. But I am happy with that amount field. I don't want the amount settled field. So the very last step in um, creating a query now is to insert. I click the insert button into the document. Notice here that cell E4 now contains an Atlas formula. I can tell because I can see that formula up in the Excel formula box. So the step one of choosing the data source, step two of setting the filter, and step three of setting the output results in the creation of a query which was inserted into cell E4. I can see over here in the task pane what's concatenated into one big long formula. So you have your choice of viewing it from either perspective. Okay. So if I then save this Excel document by choosing the standard Excel save button, I'm then saving some document with this name in a folder in my network somewhere. When I then open up this document, this Excel, this uh, Atlas formula, which I previously inserted, will still be there. I can click the refresh button and I'll get the very latest sales information uh, that shows up in cell E4. Okay, the very last thing to point out, if I like this query and I choose to save it in my library, and my library is really my data source, I can click the Save As button in the Atlas task pane. Notice this Save As button is not the Save As, same as the Save As button in standard Excel. This is the Save As button in the Atlas task pane. I can name the query anything I'd like. I'll call it Atlas query number 10 and click OK. Then I go back to my data sources and I click tables refresh and I can then open up my table node customer transactions and I can see below that table node is the saved query Atlas 10 which I saved a copy of in my library. So at this moment in time, this query exists both in the library and in the library here and in my document. If I opened up a blank Excel document and I ticked this query and clicked insert, I would then have inserted that query in some other document. So that is a quick introduction to the use of the Atlas task pane.